Hey guys, it's Ben with Upstart HR. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I haven't shot a video in a while and I wanted to take some time to talk a little bit about um, teams and team performance today. Um, just had a lot of stuff going on at work lately. This made me think a lot about teams and how they work together and how they don't work together. Um, it's pretty common too. Uh, and I've just been thinking a lot about what really makes teams successful. I spent a lot of time looking at the different teams um, both internally, externally, talking to a lot of a lot of other friends and people in the HR industry because they, you know, we coach managers and teams all the time on how to be better. So I've been thinking about this a lot, and one of the most common things that I've seen that affects team performance negatively or positively, I guess, uh, the biggest predictor for a team success that I've seen is community. Uh, in other words, basically, how much each member of the team cares about each other um pretty simple right uh in you know for some of you to hear that you think you know i don't really care i just i just need to get the work done and other people think yeah you know wish my team care about me so uh, depending on which one of those you are uh, you might feel different about the issue but it really is a powerful force and i've seen how wonderful it can be when you have a team that really cares about each other that wants to work together and, and doesn't let let things get in the way. So I thought a little bit about it and I put together five quick tips, quick ideas for how to build more community into your team, whether you're leading a team, whether you're a member of one, whatever the case, uh, if you want to have a better team, better performing, better you know, communicating all across the board, think about some of these things. Uh, maybe they'll, they'll help you out. Uh, number one is get away from the office sometime. Uh, if it's just a quick lunch, if it's something else, whatever it is, uh, just get away from work sometimes because the conversations you have outside of work, whether they're about what you're doing or not, are are they're different. They have a different feel to them. They have a different, uh, I don't know what it is. If it's just getting away from the hustle and bustle that you can stop and focus on things in a new way. Not sure exactly what it is, but I know that it's powerful. Uh, number two, take time within your team meetings to talk about each other their personal life, things that are going on. Don't force anybody if they don't really want to. But uh, for those that do, just give them a little opportunity to talk to everybody about things that are going on, what's what's important, what's top of mind for them. And uh, it's good for people to do that because then you can connect with them on a deeper level. Number three, um, it's silly, yes, but have inside jokes. Uh, if you don't have any, create some. Um, some of the funniest things and uh, biggest icebreakers when things are really tense and difficult at work and we can throw out one of our inside jokes that means nothing to anybody else outside the team but for us it, it you know usually gets a laugh gets a smile and and uh, just helps to to relieve the tension a little bit um, so inside inside jokes are uh, kind of important number four create recurring opportunities for team members to air their grievances especially if they're um, if they're having friction with number, another member of the team. And this can't become a rote uh, checklist like, okay, any problems? No, check. Okay, done. Move on. You can't do that. It has to be meaningful. It has to be purposeful. And people have to be honest with each other or you might as well not do it at all. But I think a lot of the problems that teams get into is there's a steady disconnect and people just start resenting each other or whatever else. And they never can come back together because no one no one gives them that opportunity. I mean, for most of us, the opportunity is there to talk to somebody else on our team. We just don't take it. And uh, just creating those recurring opportunities where it's a, you know, crap-free zone. We're being honest. We're being open with each other. And just taking advantage of that kind of thing is really important for teams. And uh, number five, this one is so, is so powerful. Um, it's individual success equals team success individual failure equals team failure if you ever get to the point where you're saying well at least it's not my my stuff is messed up you know bob can't get his stuff together but at least it's not mine there will come a time when your stuff where you need some help where you need some some attention some support whatever it is from your team and if you've been saying that all along they're going to say hey at least it's not my area that needs help uh, so Think about it. Every time you see someone struggling, you know what? If they fail, we all fail. We might as well all give up because 
it's that important to care and have concern about the rest of the people on your team. And then when someone wins, I mean, hey, they can get the kudos for that, but uh, hopefully they'll share that around as well. The biggest thing that I've seen that I understand that I understand now that I didn't you know, years ago is that great teams don't just they don't happen. You don't put a lot of smart people together because we've all worked on highly skilled teams that were still highly dysfunctional. They don't have backs then you have to put things in place. You have to be very purposeful and intentional about it. But it's worth the effort. It's worth the time invested and the effort invested to get those, those higher results that uh, come from working on a high performance team. Anyway, I'd love to hear some thoughts. Uh, shoot those out, um, leave them in the comments, whatever's, whatever's best. Thanks for checking it out, guys.